Well, there you have it. Unfortunately, Mage does not get the job done. Just showing how tricky it is to not only win the Triple Crown, even to just get to the Belmont Stakes, having the victory in the Derby and the Preakness Stakes. That's why we thought it was a good time to look back on the horses that were able to at least go to Belmont with the Triple Crown on the line and show you many on that list of how tricky and how many things come up that make it really hard to do. What's up, everybody? Colin Sheen here along with my good friend El Ombre on Trust the Profits YouTube page. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. We are looking at how difficult it is to get past that third leg of the Triple Crown. The first two legs obviously create so much excitement going into Belmont. And let's see, what do you think, El Ombre? How have you thought about horses that have gone Derby, Preakness, the time between the Preakness and the Belmont is just so exciting. Well, my horse racing fandom became, um, I guess, pretty primary in the mid mid to late 90s. And I can't tell you how many times I saw a horse and I'm like, this is the Triple Crown. This is the horse that's going to do it. This is the, He's going to get there. Bada boom, bada bing. And he's each one of them got up to bat, got the Kentucky Derby, got the Preakness. Something happened in the Belmont. Didn't quite hammer it home. Uh, a lot of different stories along the way. We have nailed it back. Colin and I, we put together a little list for the people of some of the horses in the last, I don't know, 25 years, 30, whatever it is. We're going back to 97 with some horses that hit those first two legs, came up short for whatever reason, and we're going back to 1997 first. Silver Charm, who was trained by Bobby B, Mr. Baffert, jockeyed by friend of the family, Gary Stevens. What happened with Silver Charm, Colin? Well, you're right. I'm 40 years old, so you nailed it with the 70, with the 90s, right? Because you're getting late into those 90s, and suddenly we had uh, both Silver Charm in 97, and Baffert came back the very next year and what i always thought was so interesting in and in many of these belmont stakes races that we're going to watch and get remind ourselves on is that these horses enter the stretch and you're like yes yes we finally oh, have one like they've looked like they've gotten there uh and only that's kind of the each way that the horses over the last you know 25 years have entered into the Belmont, something funny has happened. And I think we're going to kind of walk through that to just show how hard it is, not, not just in the fact itself, but all the little twerk, quirky things that could happen uh, on the lead up to the Belmont Stakes after running the two. And here you have Silver Charm, um, who ends up getting beat by Touch of Gold. This was 1997. And what I love in a lot of these clips, El Hombre, is – there's no one in the infield right here, but when they cross the line, you'll see this little group of people, right? And yeah, yeah. you see one, one guy right? pumping his hands because you know he's got the winner, and everyone else is so disappointed. Uh, Silver Charm on the inside there getting passed by Touch of Gold, and there you see the crowd. They're all just disgusted, throwing their hands down because uh, they thought that this was going to be the year. Yeah, I mean, and, and I can tell you, like, I maybe not 97, but I would say – and we'll get to it a little bit later, but a few years after this, um, when a couple of horses took a swing at the Triple Crown, I remember being like in, uh, being, you know, camping with friends at a, at a local bar, toilet bar somewhere, yelling and screaming that, that this horse was going to, this is the one, this one's going to do it. Put, you know, put a astronomical amount of money for me at the time uh, into this. And it was just, it felt like a real curse, like the Red Sox or the Cubs that were never going to get it done. It felt like a real curse. Didn't know if we'd ever see it because it, uh, before, uh, no spoiler alerts here, but uh, before 2015, there was a 30 whatever year drought, basically the same amount of time I, ha I had been alive on earth. So I just didn't know if I'd ever see it again. So, or ever see it, period, because it never happened in my lifetime. So, a year after this, we went to real quiet, another Baffert joint. Kent DeSormo was aboard this time. Another second place result. Colin, what happened here? Man, this was one of the most exciting ones. And before 97, we hadn't had 
uh, a horse since 89. So there was a little gap in even having the opportunity of having a triple crown winner. And this is another one where I was talking about, I mean, look at this at this point, you're like, yes, here it is. We're finally oh, yeah, going to get a triple crown winner. And you're just, everyone's going crazy. And then look at victory gallop. And these two horses had gone one, two in the Derby and the Preakness. Even here, you're look still like, we're good. Oh, we're good. 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 Oh my God. Look the head and, uh, bob. The head look bob. At the, crowd. the crowd's hugging. They the think they got ever. It. The closest ever situation to a losing triple crown non-winner, right? That was unbelievable. The yeah. horse closed 20 miles an hour faster than um, Real Quiet, too. Amazing. And, and, and I just remember the time. You know, I've edited this video, so it's going to go quicker than it did in real life. But just think about, A, you hadn't had a triple crown winner in so long, and you could not yeah, tell wrong. watching that live who, who had got oh, there. No. A lot of people thought Real Quiet it looked had done it. Watching that replay in real time, it looked like it. I mean, and I even knew the result. And I'm sitting there. Yeah, there you go. Look at that. That's awesome. And that right there. So now, you know, you had the year before Silver Charm gets beat. And now you come into 98. This happens. Obviously, Baffert comes in with back-to-back -back years. And it's you're, you're leaving heartbroken. And you got to remember, it's another whole year that hopefully you have another horse that's going to bring it that excitement. And one year later, we had one that came in at 31 to 1. Kentucky Derby upset specialist, charismatic, one of the biggest upsets in Derby history at that at that point. Um, Dwayne D. Wayne Lucas was the trainer. What happened with charismatic? Because he was, like I said, an upset winner in the derby, got it done in the preakness, comes out here, and this there's a lot behind this story. If you you know, Colin, go into it as much as you want. I have some details if you, whatever you get into. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, Charismatic takes the lead in the final furlong, uh, faded and loses to a horse by the name of Lemon Drop Kid with a mile and an eighth to go. Um, but the most crazy memory that you'll have and a lot of us will have out of this race is what happens right after the mm -hmm. finish line. And Charismatic finishes third. Um, but Chris Antley, the jockey, realized something was up with Charismatic and immediately – right immediately jumps off the horse after the finish line um, and starts to hold up Charismatic's leg uh, and ended you up... Saw, you saw Antley sit up for a second there like... Yeah, and here's the video. We'll show it right here. Uh, when they cut back, you'll see him immediately trying to pull him up and he starts holding Charismatic's leg and immediately yeah, starts calling for help. Um, and the owners know that the something's something's going on. And Chris Anthony saved Charismatic's life. And that's that's kind of the image right there that I think of when I think of Charismatic. And then he turns and you'll see him lift his leg up. Life-saving event happening right there, folks. Yeah. And you obviously see and, the And concern. nobody realized it in real time. I mean, that's, yeah, that's, that's emotional if you love if you love the game and the, and the horses. Yeah, I stopped it there because I, I was watching it when I was editing this morning. I'm like, I don't, I don't want to keep. Yeah, you know, I don't want to get teary eyed. Yeah, cut that. <laughs> Thank you for cutting that short because yeah. if we if we would have dwelled on it too much longer, yeah, man, a lot of people didn't realize it in real time. But man, that was that's that's a cool, cool story. He did have two fractures in his leg. I mean, that that was the facts coming back after. So who knows if he would have got it done or not? But yeah, and didn't um, run again after that. Was, was obviously retired. Yeah, the important thing was Antley, man. That guy gets down. You know, it, it's funny to talk about now because it's such a money game now. Mm. There's so many uh, money grubbing types in all industries, but I I, I feel like um, when something like that happens, the good comes out of people. And in that case, that was a, that was pretty inspiring to see a jockey jump off immediately, knowing that something bad was going on, and lift that leg up and. If charismatic jogs around the, you know, jogs around for two minutes, even right there, 30 seconds, maybe, maybe, you know, he doesn't recover. So, yeah, it's amazing. And something that I'll always remember is that image that you see there. Yeah. Next up, we had War Emblem in 2000. We had to go three years. And this is where you start getting those gaps um, a little bit. Then we go on a little bit of run of having, and this is what you talked about. So I'm 40. Uh, we're similar age and you had this, this run of years where it's like, all right, we're going to get it. We're going to get it. We're going to get it. And you just keep yes, running so into it. And with war emblem, who was another Baffert joint, by the way, Vicky Espinosa on the Mount. Um, this horse, he uh, stumbles out of the gate, gave himself way too much work to do. 
Yeah, and this was a race that ended up getting uh, – he ended up finishing eighth, and you had a 70-1 to 1 winner. The longest shot yeah. to win the Belmont at that point was his Sarava, um, yep. who actually won a head-to-head -head battle with Medaglia Doro, a horse that a lot of you will recognize now if you're looking at PPs, uh, who's one of the best sires, yeah. uh, obviously, around. And then the very next year, uh, you had Funny Side, and you texted me saying, did Funny Side win – the Preakness, he was one that you forgot about. Yeah, because I, I actually won a bunch of money on Funny Side in the Derby. But after that, because he was, I want to say he was like 8 or 10 to 1 in the Derby. And clearly the Derby winner goes into the Preakness usually as one of the favorites. So I didn't recall him actually winning the Preakness and going into the Belmont as a uh, opportunity to win the Triple Crown. But apparently he did, and he almost got there, a third place finish. But. Yeah, the, the, the tough part for Funny Side was the actual the rains that came in. And look at the track. It became very sloppy, really tough conditions. Funny Side had the inside rail for much of this race uh, and just really got the worst of it. Uh, he led in the far turn, um, but then another horse, like you, you start seeing these names, so it's funny. You see Empire Maker, um, who finished in this race. And these are the sires that you're hearing these days, you know? So that's always interesting when you go back and see who came out of these races. Funny Side ends up Finishing third, and we go another year uh, with a triple crown drought. Well, yeah, that's uh, on top of the rain. You had two distance monsters who Empire Makers, clearly another sire yeah. that's a legend. Ten Most Wanted was the other horse there that was second. Another monster horse, bred for distance. And, you know, every year you talk about there's, there's uh, distance specialists, and those were two of those. And then we went to 2004, guys. Smarty Jones, I think, was the one that I had maybe eh, I'm gonna hesitate for one second and say one of the most confidence, uh, highest confidence levels in. Smarty Jones looked pretty damn unbeatable. And here we go. He was a um Johnny Service jocked by Stuart Elliott. Go ahead. And as I said, this is another one that I highlighted as he's at this point, you think here it is. We're finally gonna get it. Smarty Jones had captured uh the hearts of all americans and then you have birdstone flying on the outside and oh, again you're saying God. hang on hang on hang on yeah, what a heartbreaker and you get to this point you know it's obviously not as close as the real quiet but um and there you see that i love that shot you got to pay attention to the crowd in the background as they cross the line because you just see them all kind of drop their heads <laughs> yeah. and, <no> and cheering <laughs> it is and so different yeah there's one guy i'm gonna see if i can pause this uh, right there. Well, he, yeah, right. he's real happy. Right that, above that the A. Wants money. Right above the A and VZ. You got the one guy, and everyone else is yeah, hanging yeah. their heads, ripping up their tickets. Uh, Everybody all the people that loaded probably... up a rifle in their pocket. <laughs> well, oh, everyone that, that had that two dollar ticket that they thought would be uh, <laughs> history, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. And then a three year drought sounds like a long time. Two thousand eight, and and that's why I hesitated a little bit on Smarty Jones saying. The horse that I thought was going to be the magical horse to get it done. Big Brown in 08 was an absolute monster, folks. I mean, it was unbelievable. The the one year I went to the Preakness Stakes, this was the year. I went down to the Preakness and saw Big Brown uh, just absolutely run a huge race. And then he comes into the Belmont and um, obviously had a really lifeless race. You know, didn't even finish. They pulled him up, obviously. Uh, making sure that he would be okay. But talk about a year that you really thought you're going to have. And this is what happens, right? This is what was happening year after year. You're going in with these horses. You're like, oh, this is finally the one. This is finally the one. Then you're running the two-minute race, and you're getting to the stretch, and you're like, he's there, he's there, he's there. And and then you have this other gigantic letdown. And it's uh, it just shows how difficult this has been to pull off. Yeah, well, Kent DeSormo pulled him up. I think he thought there was something wrong with him. They had the vet check him after the race. There was really nothing wrong with him. And it was kind of like, at the end of the day, folks, these are wild animals running around in circles. Big Brown didn't feel like racing that day. Or, you know, and if he did, even if he did, and, you know, DeSormo felt that there was something wrong, he didn't fire, uh, pulled him up. For safety reasons, the horse had no shot to winning, so he wasn't firing. We get it, but 
Yeah, and I mean, then at you the end of the day, maybe he just didn't feel it. Maybe he's like, yeah, I don't want to have a sandwich. You know, you don't you don't know what's going on in the horses' minds. They're wild animals, and that's why you can never have a lock of the century. Like I've had some fun videos about. Then we got into a little bit of uh, you know, similar in a way to Big Brown. You had 2012 where you had I'll have another going into the Belmont Stakes after winning the Derby and the Preakness and gets scratched, has a tendon issue and doesn't even start. So uh, you know, you have that whole run up of is we're gonna have a triple crown winner this year, and then you don't even get to see it. And obviously there's that huge letdown before the race even starts. Yeah, similar to Forte, which obviously didn't get as far along this year as I'll have another did, but similar. I mean, he was, he was lining up to be the horse again this year and you see it sometimes, but you know what? You take a step back and you, you, you look out for the animals. These are um, very valuable animals aside from the fact that they're animals who deserve life and respect. So, I mean, I'll have another was pulled back. I'm sure that was so difficult for, for um, all the connections. Yep, and then 2014 was the famous year with California Chrome, who ended up finishing fourth. And I say famous because it was the rant afterwards by Coburn that ended up getting the uh, country's attention, and which now you go on Twitter, it's kind of that argument that we kind of have every year about yeah. what we should do and should we change the way either the races are spaced out. And his idea, if you remember that rant, which he did apologize for, but it's kind of what you remember is him in the cowboy hat saying uh, they took the coward, they took the cowardly way out to come just to the Belmont and skip the Derby and the Preakness. And his, in the moment, he had so much emotion and he was feeling the way we all were, which is we just wanted this so bad. And to have him get beat by a horse tonalist who had skipped those previous two races just to come in nice and fresh really ignited that conversation of, is it fair that a horse can skip the Derby and the Preakness and come right into the Belmont? He thought that the 20 horses that are in the Derby should be the only 20 that run in the Preakness and the only 20 that run in the Belmont. I'm sure you remember that rant on TV very well. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. And you know, there's, there's an argument to be made for that. I get it. Um, especially in that situation, because that was the end of the 30 year drought spoiler alert. Um, it did feel like it was never going to happen again. And it was kind of like horse racing kind of needed it to happen. I mean, because looking at this list, there was eight horses. I don't know. I can't do the math. That's too many names, too many lines of information. I'm not that smart of a person, but eight or 10 horses here that all great horses that we thought would get there. Didn't get there. And then Callie Chrome goes out and to lose to a horse who wasn't even in the triple crown conversation. I get it. Don't necessarily agree with it, but I mean, there's certainly a uh, conversation to be had. It's still being had today. But the fact of the matter is California Chrome didn't get out of the gate clean. Rough start, tough trip. I mean, he actually trip, got everything on. went wrong. He actually got stepped on coming out of the gate. And I remember yeah. he was ran that race injured. So it was a valiant fourth considering what happens. And again, went right for him the whole race. And yeah, just, that shows you how much has to happen correctly for you to win. Exactly. That. Yeah. Yeah. You get you get stepped on out of the gate and there go your chances. But yeah, about it. but then we finally come to 2015 and we finally break that curse with American Pharaoh. And it's guess who? Bobby Baffert gets it done. <laughs> you said it. Trust the profit profit's favorite trainer and America's favorite trainer. Bob Baffert and look at Pharaoh. And this was a great moment. I don't care what you think of Baffert or anything else. This was an amazing moment because Pharaoh was a monster. Got it done easily. And even here, I'm sitting here going, what's going to happen? What's, <laughs> right. What's gonna, it, it can't, it can't happen. I think I had tears, you know, I'm an emotional guy. That was awesome, man. I was That's actually, I was actually at the Jersey shore at a concert on the beach um and i was checking my phone and someone texted me immediately and said american pharaoh did it uh so i didn't even get to see this live it was like it was actually kind of like you know weren't expecting it to happen because of all the history and then the one year that i decided to just skip out on watching it is of course the year it happens yeah that was dude it was um yeah again whatever you think of baffert or pharaoh or horse racing in general whatever your opinions are you couldn't help but get a little emotional on that because it was just such a long time coming. 
And that horse is, it, it was a nice story. It was a, it was a good story. That wasn't a super horse. That was not a, um, spoiler alert, justify type horse. that was dominant from day one. It was just a good horse. And yeah, three years later, it happened again. Justify Bobby Baffert again, a little bit more controversy around justify though. Yeah. And you started, it's funny if you go back over the history of the triple crown winners, because they do kind of tend to come in bunches. Um, and if you go through and look at the 13 Triple Crown winners, they sort of, you know, there's two or three within a decade, and then you'd go multiple years, decades without having one at all. Uh, and I kind of thought when I had, when you had Pharaoh and then Justify, I was like, oh, here's a little bit of a run that we're going to get on. Uh, and now this is, we, we're in a, you know, now you, it was just an amazing moment with Justify. Um, and this was one I certainly saw and obviously the Bob Baffert effect, uh, the, the one that everyone recognizes, uh, and just a great moment. Like you said, you get, you, you do get the tears and the, the feeling really works up when they, when this happens. And here's a, here's a sad part. I love justify by the way. Uh, verifying was, uh, the son of justify that was in the derby mix earlier in the season. Um, it's not the horse's fault that if, if Baffert, even if you're a Baffert hater and he, you have accusations of the juice and all that. And by the way, justified to get nailed after the Santa Anita Derby for a positive test. Um, that's why he's controversial. You'll never get past something like that. But again, this is the horse didn't sit there and say, Hey, juice me up. I want to win the Derby. I mean, come on guys. The, there's so many haters that justify. I, I don't know. I don't get it. Um, I don't know. Where, where were you at on the justify uh, the drugging? Where do you stand on that? Because of course you're going to get an asterisk. To me, it's like it's kind of like the um, steroid era in baseball. I mean, what are you going to do? Yeah, it's such a tough, tough segment and topic for me that I try to just focus on the horse. And like you said, the horse yeah. didn't decide that. It's you know seeing the Baffert. Um, images of being the person that in our lifetime, at least so far, has been the one that we've seen uh, going back to 97 and 98. That's the face of racing that you see. And so for him to do it with all the controversy is a little bit of a bad taste in the mouth. But I love this sport so much that you just try to focus on what happened in those two races and try to walk away going, that was really cool. Um, and hopefully we'll see multiple more in our lifetimes. But as we talk about and why we wanted to do this was just to show you how difficult of a task this is. And it's not, uh, there's so many factors that lead into trying to pull this off, whether it's fresh horses coming in, whether it's injuries that happen, whether it's thinking you've won and getting beat like Silver Charm uh, and passed at the last second. It's an incredible feat and very difficult to pull off. Anything you want to add to Laundry before we wrap this up? No, I mean, like you said, they, they tend to come in packs. I don't know if the 2020s will have anything like that, but yeah, it's just fun to look back through the history because it is so difficult, and I hope that they don't change. That's my. I'll, I'll throw one thing out. I hope they don't change the Triple Crown. Me too. I really do because I think that it will cheapen history if they change it, and um, you know, it's it's a very difficult thing for a reason. And uh, it should be difficult. It's a, you know, it's one of those Mount Everest type things where it takes it takes a freaking uh, monster to get it done. And let's keep it that way. And it makes you appreciate it that much more when it does happen. So I agree with you. Let's not change it. Let's leave it how it is. And let's focus on uh, the horses and getting them to wear so that they're ready to tackle that monumental challenge. That'll do it for us on the how hard it is to win the triple crown please like and subscribe thank you to all of our viewers